So Windows 10 is dead and some of you might have a computer that supports Windows 11 if you like being spied on by Microsoft or you just switch to Linux. If you are new to Linux, welcome, you have come to the right video. Here are 10 dumbest mistakes new Linux users make and how to avoid them. We'll start from number 1, rare mistakes, to number 10, the most common ones. So without wasting your time, let's get into it. Alright, so number one is using the wrong boot mode. So nowadays you have the option to run UEFI or legacy BIOS as your preferred boot mode. And most modern Linux installers or distributions support both UEFI and legacy BIOS. The mistake here is that when you mix these modes during the installation process, you could have an unbootable system or you can have weird issues like missing boot logos. To check when you power on your PC, if you only see your distro logo and not your motherboard splash screen like Asus or MSI, then you are likely running legacy mode or legacy BIOS. Now you can't just switch from legacy to UEFI later because your bootloader won't match your firmware. So even if you do switch from legacy to UEFI, if you restart your system, chances are you will get back into the BIOS. To fix this, you have to reinstall your Linux distribution using the correct boot mode which is UEFI. Nowadays, UEFI plus GPT is the standard, so always go with that. Number two is a mistake that is fairly rare and it's also a mistake that I've fallen into. And I also want you to avoid doing this and that is installing multiple desktop environments. Like I said, it's rare but curiosity gets the best of many of us. But here's the thing, installing multiple desktop environments like KDE, GNOME, XFCE all together can lead to potential mixed themes, duplicate apps, or broken login screens. In addition, installing multiple desktop environments can actually eat a lot of your space, which is something you don't want. So I would advise you as a beginner to just stick to one desktop environment. But if you really really want to try other desktop environments, use a virtual machine or a separate user. By keeping one desktop environment per system install, your sanity will thank you. Mistake number three has to do with gaming and that is using NTFS drives for games or Linux data. This mostly affects dual booters but I think it can also affect people who are getting into Linux and they're using NTFS drives to play their games. Sure, Linux can read and write NTFS but it doesn't always play nicely. Games on NTFX partitions can suffer performance drops, save issues, or even file permission problems. So to avoid this, just use ext4 or btrfs for your Linux games and Tata instead. It's not only faster and safer, but you will save yourself from a lot of headaches. Mistake number four, installing random PPAs or internet scripts. Oh boy, you found a cool command on Reddit or Stack Overflow and just added some random PPA. And that's how broken package managers and dependency hell begin. Avoid this by using official repositories like Flatpak or trusted sources like Flathub. If you really must add a custom repo, Understand what it does first. Mistake number five is a classic one and that is expecting Windows EXEs to just work. You downloaded a .exe, double click it and expect it to open like on Windows. Spoiler alert, it won't. I recommend you check out this video I made where I talked about the basics of how Wine and Proton work. But to summarize, Linux uses compatibility layers like Wine and Proton to translate Windows APIs into Linux ones. So no, it's not a native support, it's just pure translation. So instead of dragging random .exe files, 
check out guides or tools like Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris, Port Proton or even Focus Launcher and Steam with Proton for games. There are other launchers that I forgot to mention like Bottles and stuff but you get the point. In addition, if you really want to know if a game works on Linux, then I recommend you check out ProtonDB. Now we get into the most common mistakes a lot of Linux beginners make. So starting at number 6 is not backing up before tweaking. Yes, Linux gives you freedom and that is amazing. But it also means you'll be responsible for whatever you'll be doing. This includes tweaking your system. So before you start editing system configs, installing your kernels or customizing your desktop, make a backup. Because when something breaks, as in if your distribution decides to take a fat dump, which it will eventually, you want to roll back easily. Tools like Timeshift let you create restore points just like Windows Restore, but it's a lot better. So I recommend you make a backup. Mistake number 7. Ignoring hardware compatibility. When it comes to hardware compatibility, I think Linux is getting better, but there are some people out there who are still having hardware compatibility issues. So you think your hardware will just work, you installed your preferred Linux distribution, then you reboot and boom, you get a black screen, maybe you don't have Wi-Fi or maybe the sound is not working at all. This is why it's always recommended to test your distribution in a live USB mode first because that's what live USB modes are to test your distribution with your hardware. It doesn't matter if you're using Linux Mint, if you're using PicaOS or CacheOS or whatever distribution you're using, it's always recommended to try the distribution in a live USB mode first before you actually install the distribution on your PC. So if your Wi-Fi works, if your sound card works, that is if you have one, if everything works, then you're good to go and you can pretty much install your distribution. Mistake number 8 and this one is I would say a common mistake and that is mixing package managers. Now to a Linux user this might be obvious. Why would you even want to mix package managers in the first place? But to a completely noob this may sound like it's not a big deal. So using multiple package managers like apt, snap, dpkg and flatpak might sound fine, but in the long run, it can cause duplicate apps, dependency conflicts and wasted disk space, which is something you don't want. If you're new to Linux, then you have to learn your own package manager. So if you use something like Ubuntu or Debian, apt is going to be your package manager. If you use Vedora, you're going to have to use DNF. And for the Arch users who are watching this YouTube video, you already know the drill. You're going to have to use Pac-Man. That is, if you're new to Arch, you, you're going to have to use Pac-Man. Now, if you want sandbox apps, then Flatpak is going to be a best friend because it is the safest cross-distro choice. So, yeah, Flatpaks are also a good way to install apps without relying too much on package managers, in my opinion. Mistake number 9. This mistake is a mixture of mistake number 4 and number 8 that I just talked about. I made this mistake, a lot of Linux users made this mistake in once of their lives and this mistake is copy pasting random terminal commands especially with sudo. You see a mysterious command online and think, eh I'll just paste it, what's the worst that could happen? And that's how Linux Roulette begins. Commands from forums like Reddit or YouTube might be outdated, distro specific or straight up malicious. And combine that with sudo, you're basically saying, I have no idea what this does but let's run it as admin anyway. You can already tell what's going to happen when people do this mistake because they will end up nuking the distro or installing potential malware. Yeah, a lot of nasty stuff can happen, especially if you don't know what the heck you're doing. So the best way to approach this is always read what the command does before running it. If you are not sure what it does, you can look it up and it doesn't hurt to do a quick Google search. 
always use trusted sources, especially official docs, distro wikis, or reputable YouTubers. And the most important advice that I would give you or, or anyone who is in the Linux community is please, please, please do not overuse sudo. As you already know, sudo is like the administrator. It's a powerful tool, not a shortcut button. And finally, number 10. This is the most super, super common mistake that a lot of Linux users who are new to it are going to make. And that is neglecting updates and drivers. On Windows, updates are forced, meaning when your system is updating, you have to wait until the updates are done doing whatever they are doing. This not only shows that you really don't have control over Windows updates, but second of all, well, most of your time that you wanted to spend on your computer is now going to waste. On Linux, you're in control. Not only do you decide when and when not to update your system, but when you install the updates first, you can still use your system, which I think is great until you forget to update your system or you decide not to update the system at all. Skipping updates for too long means missing security patches, bug fixes, and graphics driver updates leading to performance issues or crashes. So update once a week, depending on your Linux distribution. Not only is it quick, but it keeps your system healthy, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it. Those were 10 dumbest Linux beginner mistakes and how to avoid them. By staying away of these, you will save yourself hours of frustration and make your Linux journey way smoother. So did I miss anything? Drop them down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and happy Linuxing.